thank you very much for this introduction. And uh, well, today I'm not going to talk uh, here about Livellium. I, I know you, m most of you, many of you. I'm going to talk about uh, one of the main reports that we have launched in the last years. In fact, uh, um, we decided last year to create, a, or to launch an IoT survey uh, with all our ecosystem of partners and all the followers that Livelim has, uh, because we wanted to check uh, if our feelings regarding the status of the market was similar to what the companies in our uh, ecosystem uh, were living. Uh, you would probably have read uh, thousands of times that new about in 2020 we should have 50 billion of connected sensors and everybody's waiting, isn't it? Some articles are talking about uh, right now we are around 9 billion connected uh, um, devices, but there is a lack of 41 billion connected devices, and it's said that it's the, 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 the biggest mistaken forecasting in, in IT uh, world. So let's find out a little what's happening. Um, let me share with you the, the, these amazing figures where you can see that uh, counting with our ecosystem and all the volume followers uh, all around the world. We have got in 12 weeks more than 600 of participants belonging to more than 250 companies in 42 different um, countries. That means that we are giving a real good credibility to this report that, of course, you can discharge in our website, livelium.com, if you want. And, uh, Big names like Amazon, NEC, Ericsson, all of them, partners of Livelium, have participated, giving their ideas about what's happening in the market, uh, in the IoT market right now. So let's start knowing a little about the kind of companies participating in this survey. Uh, it's quite uh, diverse, but 50%, uh, more than 50% are small companies, and. Uh, around 20% are very big companies with more than 100 employees, located around 50% in Europe, 25% in uh, America, 25% more or less in Asia and Oceania. What we first asked these participants were, was, uh, what's your experience in IoT projects? And um, the surprise was, is the, it's very diversified, uh, the, the kind of verticals where they are participating in IoT projects. In fact, we don't find a vertical that is pushing uh, up the, 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 the IoT market speci specifically. But um, industrial IoT, of course, it's important. Uh, agriculture projects are important, uh, water projects, smart cities projects. But we can see how diverse are the verticals where uh, our participants in these surveys are working on. And um, of course, the big questions that everybody is talking, are we still doing proof of concepts? We are still doing proof of concepts in 20% in of the cases. Of course, we are seeing the first signings of moving to medium size in a 25%, um, and of course, only 11% are moving to large projects. So we are seeing uh, the first signs about movement forward in the, in the IoT market. And uh, regarding the experience of our participants in the projects, we can see that more than 70, around 75% uh, have been participating in less than five IoT projects. Only 12% of the participants have been working, involved in more than 10 different projects. And of course, in most of the cases, the budget is low, lower than uh, 100,000 euros, and only in 4% of the cases, we are talking about projects uh, with a budget uh, bigger than 1 million euros. Okay, that's the 
reality. That's what's happening in uh, the companies involved in IoT projects. Now, we wanted to know uh, what is the what are the customers asking to uh, the companies involved in these IoT projects. And the level of engagement with IoT, because we were asking if um, some companies have their own IoT department inside, some companies um, are focused exclusively in IoT, or some companies are thinking about even creating a new department for IoT in the next future. And all these uh, environments are true because it's quite diverse, the, the situation in, in all the cases. Um, we wanted to know as well uh, what kind of IoT solutions are the, the customers demanding? Uh, standard, uh, IoT solutions that you can uh, find in a catalog of uh, some of the companies uh, involved in IoT projects or customized IoT projects. And the thing is in 50-50 more or less uh, because that's quite similar what we, we are detecting in the market. Uh, which are the objectives that promoters of IoT projects uh, have regarding uh, an IoT project. Of course, cost savings is the number one, production process improvement is the number two, and research and development is the number three. And um, which are the top concerns uh, uh, for the customers uh, regarding these projects? These are the top five. Uh, first, of course, connectivity. We are in a connectivity um, transfer and uh, uh, later you will be uh, what's the reality of the uh, selected connectivity protocols in IoT projects right now. Uh, second one is integration of different hardware devices just to make them compatible. Third concern is interoperability between different platforms. Fourth is security, of course. And five, the total cost of the projects. And we have identified sometimes that as there are so many actors involved in these kind of IoT projects, sometimes it's difficult to have transparency in every one of these steps. And when a promoter at the beginning of a project is developing the, the, the feasibility assessment of a project, uh, sometimes they don't have all the information they should have regarding the cost just to assess how successful or profitable will be a, a, a project. Knowing that, and knowing that connectivity is one of the main concerns, let me share with you some information about the, the technology in, in this survey. Of course, 90% of technology that is used in, in these IoT projects are sensors, and 3.6 are gateways. And uh, most of the participants agree uh, for, uh, in a 73% that they prefer technology that is already pre-programmed, and it, that it's easy to be implemented the plug and play without the need of having specialized engineers at home just to, to make the, the, the programming and connection. And uh, this is the situation of uh, wireless communication protocols uh, in IoT projects right now. No big surprises. The thing is that there are so many options that uh, for every specific project, for every specific vertical, and for every specific country, our customers are selecting a different protocol. And uh, this is a challenge for all the technology manufacturers, and Livellium is one of these, because we have to try to be very interoperable. And we have to be very fast adopting new technologies. And that's a challenge when you are implementing your technology in more than 140 different countries in the world. You have to get certifications all around the world. Of course, this is a real challenge for uh, devices manufacturers. 
The good news is that Laura One, following with the speech that Wink uh, shared with us uh, yesterday morning, uh, Laura One is growing more and more. In fact, it's getting closer to cellular 3G and 4G. And of course, is the winner at this moment in the race of low power wide area network uh, connectivity, even higher than narrowband and LTEM that were expected to be very, very big just a few years ago. But the truth is that LoRaWAN is becoming actually the, the, the main low power and wet area network uh, protocol used uh, in IoT projects. Of course, connectivity is one of the biggest uh, concerns of uh, customers when they have to uh, structure a complete IoT solution, and that's something that participants in the survey agree, because they have to select the right protocol compatible with the geography, with the bandwidth, with the characteristics of the installation, knowing the vertical, it's not the same if you have to implement sensor nodes uh, for agriculture where you don't have uh, electricity, or if you are implementing devices inside the building, of course it's not the same, and you don't have the, the same challenges to, to face regarding connectivity. Okay. Um, after this uh, summary about uh, some of the questions we have uh, uh, deployed in this uh, survey, just the main difficulties, or some of the main difficulties that uh, our uh, ecosystem of partners expressed regarding IoT projects. First, and it seems so simple, but the truth is that me, it's possible one of the biggest difficulties uh, uh, when you have to implement an IoT project is to define the right parameters that you want to measure. It seems obvious, but it is not. Uh, because uh, if you don't uh, uh, think as the customer uh, thinks, you will probably be offering a number of data without any kind of sense for the customer. So it's a challenge to define very well the project at the beginning and defining the right parameters to be measured. And once you define, OK, I need to measure these parameters to get the, the value that the customer uh, needs, you have to select the right technology. Of course, sensors, gateways, all the kind of the technology that you require to offering this value um, to, to the customers. And uh, regarding hardware, it's true that accuracy has become one of the, of the main uh, parameters that customers are taking into account. At the beginning, when Livalium started 14 years ago, everybody wanted the more sensors, the better. It doesn't mind what it's measuring and the, the accuracy and the performance. But uh, right now, we have realized that the, the customer need to trust uh, on the data that we are measuring, and accuracy is one of the main uh, parameters uh, to take into account when you select technology. And of course, durability as well. Because when that promoter is taking the decision and making an assessment of feasibility of an IoT project just to ensure a cost saving or improving efficiency in a, pro in a process, uh, they have to take into account the durability of technology and the maintenance of the equipment. So both concepts uh, can usually be two key points to take into account when you are launching an IoT project. Scalability, of course, it's something that is worrying to uh, customers because, uh, as everybody knows, we are starting deploying lots of proof of concepts, but we need to understand if that proof of concept is possible to be scaled. And you have to select the right technology as well at the beginning just to be sure that you can do that scalability after. Um, 
It has surprised me positively the result of this question regarding connectivity. And uh, our experience, at least, is that uh, sometimes along these years we have felt that uh, our customers are not well trained enough sometimes to select the right uh, protocol, for instance, and we are acting somehow like evangelists just to suggest what's the best connectivity for every single project, for every single country. However, our ecosystem of partners uh, consider that have the, the right knowledge just to select the right connectivity. And that's good news, because maybe we are just, we have moved one step forward, uh, um, knowing exactly what we want before selecting this technology. Um, we asked our uh, interview uh, as well about uh, if they consider that the data that we are with our sensors can be used as the new source of money in, in their business, and in 80% of the cases uh, agree that this is a business opportunity for them, and data well used and offering a value to the customer can be that uh, source of money. Of course, proof of concepts, always test before taking decisions. Uh, yesterday I had some conversations with partners and they, they always uh, um, complain about people is asking for thousand, thousands of, of sensors and we always say, please, let's start with 10. Let's test that that's what you want. Let's test that that's what your customer wants. And if that works, let's move forward. And uh, of course, it's very important to test technologies, to, to test the complete uh, IoT value chain before taking decisions to move forward uh, to a big project, just to ensure that we are getting a successful proof of concept. That's at least the, the, the feeling that Livelim has along these years. We think that uh, the fact that the, the market has not moved forward as fast as we expected is because proof of concepts have not been uh, as successful as uh, they should be. And uh, what about public financial tools? Half of of the participants consider that there are not enough uh, public financial tools, but all of them agree that if we had more uh, public financial tools, that would speed up the, the project, because there's lots of prefers about investing in big projects uh, in IoT. And just uh, the last one, uh, it's quite confusing because um, if, if, if you ask to the complete ecosystem of partners, no matter the kind of profile of companies they are, if they are hardware companies, software companies, system integrators, or uh, uh, consultants, universities, most of them, in 98%, consider that there is a lack of uh, people well-trained enough to ready to uh, package complete IoT solution to create uh, IoT solutions. However, when you ask some of the companies with a profile of system integrators or engineers, they think that, that themselves in the 78%, they have people well-trained good enough just to, to afford these kind of projects. I guess that we are on the movement to get it. But, of course, I, I, I think that from Livelium experience along these years, we have detected that lack of experience in, in some of the main companies involved in, in all the implementation process of an IoT project. And it, that's probably, as well, one of the reasons because the proof of concepts were not as successful as they should be. And uh, 
I, I, I think that we are just in the, in the moment that we are improving that kind of uh, training, that kind of knowledge, that kind of experience. And in fact, Livellium has decided sometimes becoming the evangelist, the consultant, knowing the experience that we have and because of all the problems that we have faced uh, in all the successful case studies that we have, just to help the, 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 this market to move uh, forward. And uh, that's all. I want to finish uh, with these amazing figures just to remem remind you that you can download uh, this report whenever you want in livelyup.com. And just to finish my thoughts as a summary, is uh, where we have the first signs of movement from proof of concepts to medium sized and large projects. I think that we need to train very good uh, uh, enough uh, um, in solution in infrastructure of IoT projects, and that if we get that proof of concepts are successful, we will get to move forward in this IoT market. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Anna, for uh, sharing with us the uh, extensive uh, research uh, details. It can be found back at libelium.com, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Uh, it, you can, on the website of the company, you can find it back, the results. Yes, yeah? yes, in libelium.com, they can look for IoT survey and they can download the, Great. the report. Great. Is there one thing based off your own research that you've changed within your own company that you can mention? Well, in fact, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the big surprise was is that all the results were very aligned with our own experience. Okay. So I think that if, if people download, uh, we'll see the, 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 the photography of the status of Rivellium as well. Yeah, great. So you are on a good track. Nice to know. Okay, thank you so much, Anna. You're welcome. <laughs>